What's up, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. We have a lot to talk about. Mookie Betts, he's not playing around this season. He was perfect yesterday. He's looking for a second MVP. We know that Bryce Harper, he's got two of those. He's been slumping lately, and he broke out in the most baseball way possible. Giancarlo Stanton once won an MVP, so it's absolutely wild to see him look this unathletic. And speaking of unathletic, the Angels, um, yeah, well, they did this in a close ball game. Now, before we talk about the highlights from yesterday, a quick update on Trevor Bauer. Yesterday, he released a video that one of the people who was accusing him was actually indicted on felony fraud, and it was not just involving Trevor Bauer, it was with someone else as well. So this person was accused of defrauding and trying to extort multiple people. I see your comments on every single video. People have been clamoring for Trevor to get back into baseball. It's just owners are afraid to sign a guy because if you go on social media, you know that if you support Trevor Bauer, you're ripped to shreds and owners don't want to deal with that. So Trevor's in Mexico right now. What does his future hold? Is he going to be back in baseball or not? All right, let's get the games underway these first few games were madness and if that isn't the biggest meatball I've ever seen I don't know what is Mickey Moniak he did not miss it that's his first home run of the year after a super slow start Logan will hop be crushing an up and in sweeper for his second home run he's hitting over 350 this year as a catcher and again there was a crazy ending to this one so do not go anywhere but before we get there we got to show off Jose Soriano this dude was pumping 101 all game as a starter he allowed just one hit over five innings he left after racking up six strikeouts the score is 3-1 in the ninth Luis Ranjifo he booted a ball that would have been the game's final out angels fans were ready to get him off the team themselves and again it was two outs and look what happened next ahmed rosario he singles jose caballero who was hitless he was due see he was due two score easy jose ties it on a rocket double to the right field corner to extra as we go both teams they're going to trade bunts followed by bad baseball hicks got to third he then scores on a pete fairbanks pass ball jose siri he got to third on a bunt and then he scores on a Cisnero airmailed Yandy's broken bat chopper and Siri kind of deked him out so I think he scores even if the throw was good to first base. To the 13th we go, Renjifo, he redeemed himself a little bit with a stolen base and Neto, he sent one through the 5-6 hole. The Halos are back up one. Two outs again for the Angels. Richie Palacios, he got his pitch and he did not miss it. He turned on a sinker inside. The lead is gone. Harold walks. Bases are loaded for Ahmed Rosario. He taps it. He beats it out so that top 4% speed comes in handy. The Rays, they walk it off. From one end same game to another this one actually makes the angels and the rays look like a walk in the park in steps the auto home run cheat code michael bush he's trying for six consecutive games with a home run that one barely missed that goes foul he eventually flies out but i thought he had number six right there both teams scored a run but we're going to skip to this lourdes guriel jr now has five home runs and 20 rbis jock peterson he slammed an inside 88 fastball because kyle hendricks he's never thrown hard but he looks washed this year it might be time for him to kind of say bye to baseball i don't know arizona went up a couple when an avalanche of scoring started for both squads. A three-run fifth for the Cubs was started by Miguel Amaya, who, by the way, had an RBI double in the third. There's an RBI triple. Canario, he doubled in Amaya. Nico then doubled in Canario. The game's tied. And Belly, he ripped a go-ahead three-bagger. That's the second RBI triple of the fifth inning for Chicago. The crazy thing is, though, Arizona hit them right back with an Uno reverse card. They tied it on a wild pitch. Jock, he took a walk with the bases loaded to grab the lead back. And Blaze Alexander, he pushed it to an 8-5 game on a single. The Cubs were not going to go down with that showing. They do, in fact, have that dog in them. They fought back to make it 8-7. Ian Happ, he's got a chance to break it fully open. He turns on a changeup. He gets it to leave. That's a grand slam. The Cubs are now up by three. The Snakes rookie answered right back with an RBI double. Blaze Alexander can rake. Swores, he flies home. Jock Peterson did his job again. That sack fly works it back to a one-run game. Bush, he gets one more at bat. It seems like destiny, and he strikes out. No six straight games with a home run for Michael Bush, but he's still been raking. We got to tip our cap to him. Cattell Marte, he did get a home run though. It's 11-11, and all I have to say is GG. Not good game. Ginkle and Grichik. Kevin Ginkle threw a perfect final inning, and then Randall Grichik, he walks it off. Oh, great. Another high-scoring game that needed extra innings. Will Brennan, he's been swinging a hot bat lately, which is fun because that's an RBI double. And oh, my. And Manuel Valdez went like 450. I mean, these are big leaguers. A curveball down the middle is not a great idea. Tyler Freeman, he returned the favor with a no-doubter of his own. That was way over the monster. He got beefier over the offseason. Same with everyone on Cleveland. They just all gained weight and put on muscle. Speaking of muscle, though, Boston broke out the boomsticks. Costas, he needed all that God-given strength to get that ball to leave. Connor Wong, he tapped 
tattoo to pitch. That's a two-run jack. He's hitting 355 as a catcher. And by the way, he's the final piece left from the Mookie Betts trade, so I'm hoping that he pops off this year. Boston, they're still down by one. Devers, he changed that in a hurry. That's a long two-run double, and Jaron Duran is fast, fast, so he's one of the few guys that would even attempt scoring. He's in there. Those were the first few runs allowed by the rookie, Kate Smith, and it happens to the best of them. He's been really, really good. Shake it off. Boston, they're up by one. Jansen is going for career save number 425. Andres said, that'll have to wait, sir. That RBI single ties it at six. Jansen got some huge help from Ken Griffey. I mean, uh, Willier Abreu. This dude plays like prime Griffey Jr. versus J-Ram, just robbing him left and right. Kenley Jam Naylor to end it, but like I said, we needed extras. Connor Wong, he lofted one the other way for a game-tying sack fly. Jose, he got some revenge. Willier can't catch that one. Steven Kwan is a small enough human to evade that tag. The Guardians are back up by one. Estevan Florio, he's been really clutch for the Guardians the last week, and the trend continued. He's not trying to do too much. And we gotta remember, this guy almost went 30-30 in AAA last year with a 1,000 OPS. The talent is there. He just has to get daily reps. Boston, they were shut out in the 11th. Cleveland, they now own the best record in all of baseball, all because, in my opinion, Miles Straw is in AAA. Do not let him back on the squad. All right, I'm gonna spare you guys from another sweat fest. Let's find a game that wasn't even close in the slightest. James McCann, he's allowed to face a righty for once, and he showed that he is, in fact, capable sometimes. That's an RBI double. Gunnar Henderson might end up with 100 war by the time his career is all said and done. He's up to five home runs and four stolen bases already. This lineup is insane. Jordan Westberg, he can't get out either. He's launching balls over that dreaded left field wall. He has four home runs and 14 RBIs. Gunnar Henderson, he got greedy. He wanted more. That double scores Jackson to make it 7 to nothing. Grayson Rodriguez, he's on the bump, and he was pretty good. Buxton got to him for an RBI triple, but it's Buxton. You'll live with that because he's really good. You can also live with that when you have guys like Colton Kowser on the squad. He gets that run right back. Minnesota, they did get to Grayson one more time, so two runs, but that frustrated the heck out of Grayson. He locked in. He straight up carved the twins after that. You got Buxton on the fastball. Trevor Larnick, he chased the changeup. His day is done. Six strikeouts over six. Just those two runs allowed. Baltimore, they're looking for more. Ryan Hearn wants an RBI extra base hit, but Buxton says no. 24 hours after Mullins made one of the best catches of the year, Buxton throws his hat in the conversation. Baseball so funny, though, because we had another potential Buxton robbing O'Hearn, but Ryan O'Hearn, he got that one to leave. Buxton just missed it. O'Hearn is now hitting 333 with four home runs. The Orioles, their top five offense has has been insane. Now, if we're talking about some of the best offenses in baseball, you already know who you have to talk about next. Andy Pajes, he's making his debut for the Dodgers, and their insane offense is going to get better because it's been slowed down by Chris Taylor, who's one for 33. So let's see what happened in this game. As you just saw, Jesse Winker, he doubled down the line, and CJ kind of was slowed up, and then he had to start it back up again. It bit him. He gets thrown out at home. The Dodgers get the game's first run on a Teoscar Hernandez ground out right before Andy Pajes got his first base hit as a big leaguer. Austin Barnes, he's not scared of Patrick Corbin. He brings home Andy and Mookie. He's not scared of anyone, let alone Patrick Corbin. There's an RBI double. He wants another MVP so bad. Jesse Winker wants an award as well, but he wants the comeback player of the year after the double and then that mammoth two-run lefty-lefty tank job, 430 feet. I mean, he's... He's raking this year. He's finding barrels again, which is awesome. Hernandez, he beat him, though, only by a few feet. He went 432 feet his first of the year. Mookie, he stepped in three for three, then made it four for four after another double. Mookie, he gets the third base. He scores on a Teoscar dribbler. In steps Mookie again. And like I said, he was perfect. Five for five. He's at a 1.9 F4 already. He's on pace for a 15 F4 season. The Dodgers, their third in team OPS, just behind the Brewers and the Braves. We'll recap the Braves after the Brewers and the Padres. Wade Miley He's on the bump, and Xander, he's trying to break out of his early season slump. He singled, and so did Nando, and Profar, he just loves to bunt. He advances the runners, and Jake Bowers, he just drops it from a web gem to a head shaker. Manny Machado then squared up a pitch, and I mean, he squared it up 108 miles an hour directly back at Wade Miley. Wade stays in because he's a machine. He showed some real grit, but uh, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Hassan can makes it 4 nothing. He has three home runs and four stolen bases. He's quietly on pace for a near 20-30 season. Milwaukee's juggernaut offense, they got humbled by Dylan sees He was incredible, and he's been incredible over his last three starts. He goes six, only allows two base hits. He struck out seven, so he has three runs allowed and 21 strikeouts over his last three starts. Camp Usano, he has inserted himself as a top five offensive catcher. He's got 12 RBIs. Jackson Merrill beat out a double play, so another run scores. Adamas, 
He jolted one, but it stays in. The Padres are winners of five of their last six. They're 11 and nine, and the Brewers, they're still 10 and six. Atlanta has the number one team OPS in all of baseball. Let's see if they can extend their lead even further against a depleted Houston staff. The Astros hitting coach, Troy Snicker, he was taking on his dad, Braves manager, Brian Snicker. Troy, he was sent out there to turn in the lineup card. Arcia, he sent one far, and we actually have some controversy. That ball hit the yellow line, and I couldn't see the bounce. I don't know if it bounced behind the yellow line or what, but it was initially called a home Home run replay confirmed that it was a home run and the announcers were not happy they said it hit the yellow line and then bounced back in but I couldn't see I couldn't find it Hunter Brown was great after that he settled down he goes six innings only allowed that one run just uh, his dual mate was better Ronaldo Lopez He's been the signing of the offseason. Six more shutout frames. He's allowed just one run in his first 18 innings. He has 18 strikeouts as well, so he's been a legit stud and their best starting pitcher. Brown, he tried for seven. Not the best idea. Bases loaded for Arcia. Brown out the game now. Arcia lifted a cutter for an RBI sack fly. The bases got loaded again in the ninth. Luis Guillorme, he gets a chance to hit, and of course he drops it in for a two-run double. Chat with Trump. He fully opened the floodgates. That two-run double makes it back-to-back -back games with a four-run ninth against the Astros. The Braves, they went easy but I do want to show Kyle Tucker's fifth home run because he's so dang good. Aaron Bummer, he looked like 2024 hater. He was trying to blow it, so they yanked him. They put in Rizal Iglesias. He gets it done, and the Braves, they win 6-2. to And New York! Sorry, guys, that was an awful transition to the Yankees and Mets games, but shout out to World of T-Shirts, man. If you know, you know. The Yankees were taking on the Jays. The Mets got the Pirates. We'll talk about the Yankees game first because Yusei Kikuchi has been their daddy since 2020. Trevino, he found a hole, and Stanton looked like a 90-year-old arthritic giraffe as he rounded third base. No way that's full speed. Like, he's got to be dogging it to try and stay healthy. I don't know because that looks borderline impossible. He got lucky because Jansen dropped it. I don't know whether to call it just playing it safe or he's old. I don't know. But Justin Turner, just like you say, he does very well against the Yankees. That's a high sack fly. He's up to 16 RBIs in his last 16 games against the Yankees. Vladdy, he's been terrible with runners in scoring position. So he finally cracks the code right there with a two-run single. A big game for him. He got on like four times. Look at what magic and the power of friendship can do. Vladdy, he tips it, but his friend IKF recovers, and you say he plays the PFP perfectly, and oh my, another defensive gem is coming. Davis Schneider with the full extension. That helped you say go six innings. He only had four base hits allowed. He punched out nine. He has a two ERA and 29 strikeouts this year. IKF, he stole second later on. The ball gets away. Ernie Clement is going to score. Bo Bichette brings home IKF, making it five to one, but now it's five to two. Jose Trevino had an RBI dribbler. Oswaldo had an RBI sack fly, so it's now a two-run ball game. Trevino's bat-to-ball skills came in handy again. His second RBI bouncer of the game makes it a one-run game. Romano, he had a scary return from the IL. This is his first appearance, but he gets his first save. The Yankees have lost three in a row. The Blue Jays have won four in a row. So the Yankees have lost three in a row. The Mets are going for three wins in a row. They're facing the ultra-nasty Jared Jones, the rookie. He's had 58 swing and misses through three games, and also he can throw 100. Like, I knew he had gas in his back pocket, but not 100 miles an hour. Mets fans, they're cheering on Lindor just just like it's not quite working as the Trey Turner and Rendon standing ovations. He strikes out more swing and miss for Jared Jones. Kutch is going to try and get a rally going, but Bader's defense never slumps. His routes are always very efficient. So it's 0-0 after four. Reynolds with the excuse me swing. It's one nothing buckos, which is all the rookie needed. Jared Jones made history. He's the fourth pitcher ever with seven plus strikeouts and his first four starts. Not only that, he allowed one base hit and he threw 50 strikes out of 59 pitches. What did I just say? 50 of 59 for strikes? He's out after those five shutout. Maybe they're just saving his bullets, but good Lord. Skeens, Jones, Keller has a chance of being unfair. Tip of the cap to Jose Quintana. He was very good as well. One run, four strikeouts over five, but we fast forward to the seventh. Wendell's in for Brett Beatty because Beatty had a left hammy issue. Wendell clutched up. Pittsburgh, they were playing so far in, it almost seemed disrespectful. It looked like they were playing a T-baller. It's tied 1-1, and you don't see this very often, but that's a go-ahead balk. Jose Hernandez, he did not come set by eight seconds or something like that. I don't know what the rule is exactly, but the Mets do take the lead. McNeil does an amazing job to fight versus a tough lefty. It's 3-1 now. Diaz, he's not available, so Drew Smith, he's going to be tasked with the save ball game. Henry Davis, he's been atrocious. He's hitting 180 with zero home runs. That's my call out of the week. The Mets, they do win their third game in a row. Jared Jones and Jose Quintana were both very good, but Ranger Suarez, he's going to try and put his hat in the ring for the best start of the last few minutes. That's a clean first inning for Philadelphia. JT Ramuto swatted a long two run home run and pitchers, they're athletes as well. Ranger Suarez turned a sick double play. He kept it going. He strikes out Tolia and Chuck Nasty on the curveball. Then he gets McMahon to wave at a changeup inside. Tolia, he's caught looking on a changeup. That's a terrible call, but hey, that's five shutout for Ranger Suarez. He's trying for six, 
Alan Trejo's over aggressiveness at third cost them big time. McMahon beat it out, but Trejo, he made the final out at third base. He was caught in no man's land. Harper, he's trying to break out. He used Nick Castellano's bat earlier. I don't know whose bat that is. If you guys know, let me know in the comments, but that's for sure not Bryce's bat. It worked though, and then it worked again. Two extra base hits and three RBIs over his final two at bats using that dual tone bat. Again, please let me know whose bat that is. Ranger, he's still out there cooking up a beauty. He gets Diaz for his eighth strikeout, and then Nolan, that's a complete game shutout. Ranger now has a 1.7 ERA and 27 strikeouts through his first four starts. He's a diamond in the rough fine, and again, he's even better in the playoffs. Do you guys remember Casey Mize, the first overall pick from 2018? He's missed a lot of time. Well, he's back. This is his first start for the Tigers in Comerica in two years. Riley Green, he got on via a walk, and that's tough. Evan Carter, he went from postseason legend to the league kind of catching up to him. A bad error. He's only hitting 211, but it's his turn to adjust now, and to me, he's going to do that. We know that Javier Baez is never going to adjust in the box. He's been awful offensively for like three or four years, but that's the reason why he's not in AAA. Langford can fly, and El Mago still got him. Such a sick play. Ezekiel Duran, he got Texas on the board versus Mize, and then Simeon, I hate saying it, but he stole the lead. Way too much play from Casey Mize. John Gray, he walked McKinstry in the sixth, and then Kerry Carpenter got it just over the leaping Wyatt Langford. The game is tied at 2-2. McKinstry got on again, and Veerling poked it the other way. Runners at first and third. Gio Urshela, he did it. He clutched up, and then it could have been Brock Burke out there pitching, but he's on the IL because we know what happened. The ball scoots away. Veerling scores easy. Jason Foley is trying his best not to implode, and multiple runners are on for Adolis. It got scary, but Adolis just missed the barrel. Foley now has five saves and the Tigers are 10 and 7. This Jonathan Classe kid is going to be a blast to watch. He's so fast. There he is doubling, but Mitch Garver, he's going to get hosed at home. No, he's not because Maley dropped it. A seed from Ellie was wasted because Maley could not hang on. It's 1-0 Mariners, but not for long. Stuart Fairchild can't beat it out, but that is an RBI. Mitch Garver yet a great AB in the fifth. He worked a bases of the walk to make it 2-1. The bases are loaded again in the sixth, and Mitch Hanniger, he's never allowed to play for another team ever again. He's got 12 RBIs and a 163 OPS plus. Low Logan Gilbert, he was electric on the bump. A bunch of strikeouts through six. And again, just that one run to Fairchild. Trouble in the seventh, though. Spencer Steer, he blistered a double. No, he didn't. The no-fly zone is back. J-Rod, he robbed him out there in center. Logan Gilbert is now out. We have more trouble. Nick Martini smoked an RBI off of Munoz. Wait. Wait, J-Rod throws out Ellie at third, and Fraley did not reach home in time. He slowed up not knowing that Ellie was trying for third base, and there you go. Julio, he's been useless in the box, but man, his defense is something special. Since he made Seattle fans nervous, the bases are loaded. Stevenson can rake. Sacedo, he got him to get out in front. The Mariners, they get the W. Oakland struck first against the Cardinals as their rookie catcher, Kyle McMahon, grabbed his second RBI and base hit of his career. The Cardinals answered with an RBI ground out as Donovan smoked, and Toro just barely made the play. Speaking of smoked it, Kyle McMahon, he got Lancelin again, this time on a home run. His first career home run, it's 2-1 A's, but Mason Miller, he's going to tie it. That's a sack fly, and Bladé threw it to no one. There was no one cutting it off. The runners advanced, so Jordan Walker, this sack fly allows St. Louis to score instead of just advancing to second and third. Lancelin, he was fantastic. He went out and tossed a clean sixth inning, then a clean seventh inning. He lowered his season ERA to a shocking 2.18. Hello? Ryan Helsley has looked damn near unhittable the last week, and it's because because he has been. He strikes out Butler for a seventh save. He has not allowed a base hit in the last four appearances, and I just love watching this guy pitch. He's very Mason Miller-esque, or maybe Mason Miller is Ryan Helsley-esque. Matt Chapman has not started so hot for the Giants, at least in terms of batting average. That ball was scorched. 109 off the bat for his fourth home run, so at least the power and the defense have been there. Skip and Laz Diaz, they made up for their beef from the game prior. All smiles. Austin Slater, he's going to score easy on a Wilmer Flores double. That's all that Ryan Weathers was going to allow, though. He locked in. He got Tom Murphy to swing and miss, then dotted, like dotted on the corner, a fastball against Conforto. Here comes the Marlins. They want to show some support for Ryan Weathers. Brian De La Cruz with a sweet swing for an RBI. Jesus Sanchez, he beat out a throw at first base, so it's now a tie game for Ryan, who struck out Solaire for his ninth strikeout, and that's a bad call, but Ryan will take it. A career-high 10 strikeouts, back-to-back double-digit strikeout performances for Edward Cabrera and Ryan Weathers. Josh Bell, he laced a double to left field. That started a sixth-inning rally. TA7, he beat out the throw. That's an RBI fielder's choice. The Giants, they walk two after that, and the bases are loaded for the two-time batting champ, 
vintage arise right there. Never tries to do too much. A two-run single. Nick Gordon, he pushed it to a three-run lead. When Miami, they pulled a San Francisco. They walked to. Wilmer is the tying run. He's very good against lefties. But Tanner Scott got in the chase. The Giants, they fall to 7-11. and 11. The Marlins, they're 4-14. and 14. So that does it for today's recap. Just a shout out one more time to my editor. This was a massive recap. It's Keegan's birthday. Keegan, aka Pesky Talk. Go subscribe to my man and enjoy the web gems. Five pitches just going right after these guys and getting tested early. Victor dives. And a ball hammered to center. Jacob Young tracking it. And he will. There's another slider. Now Blade hustling towards the track. He makes the catch. The pitch looking to bunt. Bunts up that third base side. Gomber catches. Bare hands. Throws to first. Grounded India on the backhand slide. Pop up. Nicely done. All around home plate. Ohapi with a quick throw to second. It's in time to get 